Hey Jazzheads, so this one's not so much of a jazz episode, uh, this gets a bit trumpet geeky. So if you're interested in the jazz stuff, then maybe you want to skip ahead to the next episode. Uh, if you're a band director or something, or you're just interested and want to find out more about these things, then stick around, you might learn something. So we're into November now, and for us trumpet players, that means one thing. Uh, we have what we call in the UK Remembrance Sunday or Armistice Day. Uh, it's Veterans Day in other parts of the world. Uh, on the 11th of November, which means as trumpet players we're often called to perform the last post and revali. These are time-tested methods of starting and finishing the two minute silence we observe uh, to remember people who lost their lives in all wars. I'm going to share with you a few tips on how I do it when I do it and a few tips that you might not have thought about to help some of you students who get asked to do it. So let's start with the last post. Uh, the last post is a piece of music that was used to signal the end of the day's proceedings in the forces. Uh, it was traditionally played, and still is traditionally played, when we see it at the Cenotaph uh, in London, um, on bugles. Uh, but we quite often do it on the trumpet, which is basically a big bugle. Okay, uh, so the last post, because it's on a bugle, it uses all of our harmonics, our harmonic series, and we don't have to push any valves down. So it just goes up and down our open notes. Uh, and the way I like to do it, uh, it kind of crosses an artistic kind of point of view with a functional aspect, obviously being a functional tune in a working forces barracks and things like that. But equally, we're playing it on a poignant occasion. So we want it to sound reasonable and uh, nice to listen to. So the way I play it goes a little bit like this. So as you can see, it just goes through a number of patterns on our open combination. Um, now, uh, various ways of doing this. Uh, I've sometimes encountered students who get asked to do it for their school or for their church or something like that, that are struggling with reaching the high G. The... That bit. Bearing in mind, and going back to what I said at the start of the video, this being a big bugle, we actually have seven bugles in here for each of our partials on the harmonic series. So quite often I suggest if you're struggling with that G, play the whole thing with first valve down and you get the same intervals, uh, except we don't have to play quite as high. We have an F instead of a G. <laughs> So, 
as you can tell for your audience won't know any different um and it makes that high g slightly less daunting if that's a problem for you so after the last post we then have our two minutes of silence and then that is followed traditionally by the Revali or the Reveille. Uh Now there's uh, quite a few different ones that get played. Um, there's the traditional one that a lot of people know, which goes. There's another one uh, that we get in the UK quite a bit that you hear. Uh, sometimes they do it at the Cenotaph. But I don't know that one very well. Uh, but the one that I do is the infantry rebelli, which goes. So that's a nice one. It's nice and short. Uh, we've done the poignant bit, so that can signal the end of the silence and off we go. Uh, again, that one, the same trick applies if you are struggling with the high notes or if you've played the first part. If you played that first part on the first valve and you want to sound and you don't want it to sound weird, then sometimes you can do the same. That's just a few bits and thoughts on the last post and the Rivali. Uh, getting you in shape, hopefully, for November the 11th. And wherever you are doing it, I wish you all the best. I've got a couple of jazz geeks coming up next week, so I'll try and get some, uh, some footage out from those. Back to the jazz next week, I think. See you soon.